Welcome back to the lead. Now it's time for the politics lead. The president is overseas, but his poll numbers have him underwater. His approval rating has dropped eight percentage points over the past month, leaving him at 45 percent, his lowest rating in more than a year and a half. He can thank scandals from the NSA surveillance leak to the continued questions over Benghazi for that dip. Let's bring in our panel to talk about it. CNN contributor and former senior advisor to Mitt Romney, Kevin Madden, Democratic strategist Tracy Seffel, and chief national correspondent for The New York Times magazine, Mark Leibovich. Mark, do you think, well, first of all, do you believe this poll? Because I, I, I know some people are questioning this poll. It's, it, it's a very comprehensive poll. Do you think this is just the first one of a whole bunch that they're going to show that these scandals have had an effect? It, it certainly could. I mean, I think if you look at the period that it covers, it, it does. it's really the first poll that covers the entire run of bad news that sort of clumped into about 10 days um, about a month ago or three weeks ago or so. So, look, I mean, this administration has gotten pretty good at riding the wave of, of ebbs and flows and poll, poll numbers. Um, I think that especially in a second term, it's easier to sort of not shrug it off, but certainly to ride it out a little bit. And then, and obviously, you want these stories to blow over, and hopefully they will for the administration, but you just don't know. Kevin. Well, you know, when I look at polls, I always look at the trend line. And what I find troubling, if I'm in the White House right now, is that the president's trend line on his popularity and the level of trust that Americans have for him is going down, right, right as many Americans feel that the economy is starting to recover and their, their perceptions about the economy are starting to go up. Usually, the president rides those numbers up. So that means that there may be an erosion here on attributes, whether or not you can trust this, trust this president, whether or not he's a strong enough leader, that may cause some irreparable harm for his second term agenda. That's what I'd be very worried about. Now, and we should also say just that Congress is having incredibly poor uh, approval ratings as well. And that's always when you say to the White House, your approval ratings are bad. They said, well, Congress is barely out of the single digits. And that's true. But Tracy, if you worked at the White House right now, would you be worried? Well, it's interesting. I also, like Kevin, like to look at trend lines. But I don't see any reason for concern here. And one of those reasons is because if you look a little deeper beyond the overall approval and you look at uh, voters' opinions on the economy and jobs, he's actually unchanged. He's within the margin of error. There is not that devastating dip that, that others are trying to portray. So that's the number one concern on the of voters. On the economy and jobs. On the economy and Where jobs. Where is he on that? What's, what's he He's on? within the margin of error. So there's not a strong dip in the way that we're talking about overall approval yeah. numbers. And that's the encouragement here, that this isn't some devastating dive that's unrecoverable. I think Mark's point about the, the clump of scandal coverage is certainly something that would have an impact. And to your point, that voters look around and say, well, nothing's getting done in Washington, and does Obama bear some blame for that? One of the things that's so interesting is that he has a huge drop among young voters, seven, down 17 points over the past month among people under 30. One thing that uh, he's now recently done uh, that people disagree with also even more is, 70, is on Syria, 70 percent of Americans oppose sending arms uh, to the Syrian rebels, according to the new Pew poll conducted before and after White House announcement on Thursday on chemical weapons. Uh, just shifting to, to this, this is exactly what President Clinton in that quote unquote private uh, meeting said uh, Obama should not worry about. He said, Don't worry about the polls, just do what you think is right. Uh, do you think that, that that's the, the right advice? Well, I mean, I think, look, it, as, as the one member of this panel who doesn't look at trend lines, I guess, um, <laughs> I, I feel I need to speak for the non trend line viewers. Here. We appreciate um, that. We, we welcome problem. all views. No, look, I mean, President Clinton obviously has a great deal of credibility as a a reelected fellow reelected president who actually knows how to take a moral imperative or think he's taking a moral imperative into making a decision like this that is frankly much more remembered by history than it is by short term poll numbers so i think i think that's clearly something that could resonate with the president and i think obviously he speaks with a, a bully pulpit there well i think with younger voters it's that he you know he always patterned himself as somebody who was a challenging the status quo he was a very different politician he's become very conventional in their eyes i think with syria the big problem is that he hasn't really made clear to the American public what the objectives are and what the goals are of his policy. And so there is a, I think there's a muddled message coming out of the polls because there's a muddled message coming from the president. Well, and possibly, Tracy, last word on this, because he is obviously very ambivalent about this. President Obama himself yeah. seems very torn. Well, he has been for good reason. These are impossible choices. Do you attempt to intervene in a civil war, recreate, um, you know, with the, the Russia on one side and the U.S. on another? It's a very 1980s dynamic. Or do you attempt to create peace in the Middle East? And who's had success there?